I'd like to call the meeting of the City Planning Commission to order. Would the you ready to call the roll, Chad? Sure. Mayor Vandersteen? Here. Alder Person Born? Here. Jerry Jones? Here. Ryan Sazma? Here. Marilyn Montemayor? Here. Dave Hoffman? Here. Don Svitan? We have a quorum. Very good. Next, uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Excuse me. Excuse me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm sorry, sir, you're going to have to continue that conversation later. Sir. Thank Next, you. we'll have an introduction of committee members. Jim, would you like to start? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Holden Quorum from the Planning Commission. Dave Hoffman, Citizen Member. Lenny Weiris, Building Inspection. Mike Vanderstein, Mayor and Chairman. Chad Pelishek, Planning Director. Steve Sokolowski from the Planning Department. Marilyn Montemayor, Citizen Representative. Ryan Sazma, Department of Public Works. Jerry Jones, Vice Chair and Citizen Member. Very good. Um, next, I'd like to ask if anyone has a, a potential conflict of interest with any of the items on our agenda. Seeing none, then we'll proceed with the minutes. Uh, ask for a motion to approve the Planning Commission minutes from March 9th of 2021. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Very good. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Then we'll move on to items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is an application for conditional use with exceptions and a certified survey map by 645 South Taylor Drive Owner Equities LLC to create a new noodles parcel at Taylor Heights Shopping Center located at 549 South Taylor Drive. Steve, do you have a report on this? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, Thomas Trzinski is here um, from Lampert Lee & Associates, and he is representing the owner on this matter. And what we're taking a look at today is um, when you look at the Taylor Heights Shopping Center, the noodles and the Taylor Heights Shopping Center are all presently on one parcel. So if you take a look at the existing um, map, you can kind of see the blue outline and that's the one parcel that's uh, presently created there. Um, the applicant is proposing to parcel off the noodles parcel from the Taylor Heights Shopping Center kind of uh, similar to the China Buffet that's over there. China Buffet is on its own parcel. So what we're talking about today is to, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the plan commission's looking at a certified survey map. Lot one is proposed to be 7.7 .7 acres and would include a majority of the Taylor Heights Shopping Center parking facilities. Lot two is the proposed um, 0.59 acre parcel and that will uh, uh, include the noodles and company. From a use perspective, nothing is changing. Um, it's strictly just creating this new parcel. The applicant has included a note. Would I be able to get to the, um, just a slight, yeah. Um, the applicant has included a note that just kind of identifies that new parcel and um, continues to uh, um, reference the previous reciprocal easement agreement pertaining to shared parking, access, and utilities. So that was one of the things we wanted to make sure was a part of this um, because creating that new lot line, the, the parcel doesn't necessarily have um, access to a street but it will share that access that's presently there. So staff is recommending approval of the CSM that you have before you today. The applicants here, if there's any um, uh, questions and I can answer any questions. Thank you for that report, Steve. Would you like to make any comments? Would you step up to the, the podium, please? Uh, yes, uh, Time Equities had approached us about uh, preparing the certified survey map 
um, for a possible sale of either the shopping center or the noodles, uh, just to maintain some flexibility in today's market. Um, we had a couple issues uh, with this uh, proposed lot split. Um, we could not maintain the uh, <coughs> pavement setbacks. Um, so that's one of the variance requests we are asking. And then also the lot size uh, is, does not, the lot two does not meet the one acre requirement. So that would be the other variance we're requesting as part of the conditional use permit mm -hmm. process um, so that the CSM could be, be approved. Thank you for those comments. Commissioners, any questions or motions? Yes, do you then uh, share maintenance of the parking lot uh, in some snow removal uh, with the Bill Hikes? Um, that, those issues, that issue will be, um, right now there is a <coughs> joint use maintenance agreement between all the facilities in this complex. Um, depending on how the buyers between the shopping center and noodles or if it's just one buyer, determine they're gonna do that. It may be multiple people that are uh, doing the snow removal, or it could be the same in individual. Thank you. You're welcome. And then I just accept the motion. Uh, move to approve subject to conditions. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any discussion on this item. Seeing none. Will the clerk call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alderperson Bourne? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. David Huffman? Aye. All ayes. Motion Thank passes. You very much Congratulations. For your time. Good luck with this, uh, this project. Thank you. Moving on, item 3.2 is an application and conditional use with exceptions and certified survey map by Smithco and Eateries Incorporated to create new uh, lots and construct and operate a Popeye's drive through restaurant at 3207 South Business Drive, the former Ryder truck site. Steve. Thanks, Mayor. Is there anyone online or in the audience here for this matter? Yeah, Mark Rodriguez, the CEO for Smithco Eateries. Hi, Mark. Um, Smith, uh, Smithco Eateries is proposing to construct a new Popeye's restaurant at 3207 South Business Drive. So this is the former Ryder Truck facility, which is located between the former Maple Lanes, I think that's gone now, and Southtown Mall. Um, uh, Popeye's, also known as Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen, is a fast food restaurant chain originally from Louisiana that mainly sells fried chicken. Some of the most popular chicken dishes include Popeye's chicken sandwich, wings, tenders, nuggets, and legs, but you can also find popcorn, shrimp, and a variety of sides like mashed potatoes with gravy, Cajun fries, Cajun rice, green beans, and biscuits on their menu. The anticipated number of employees for this is 12 to 15 per shift with two shifts daily. The restaurant itself will be approximately 2,600 square feet, provides about 32 parking spaces, um, the applicant will be creating, uh, the plan commission as part of this is also looking at a certified survey map to, to create two lots. Um, lot one is 1.8 acres and that is the one that will include the Popeye's restaurant. And lot two is proposed to be two acres and will be available for development in the future. So that would be the south half of the property adjacent to the Southtown Mall. Um, Construction of the restaurant is planned to commence as soon as possible. Uh, the redevelopment of the former Ryder pro uh, truck property will upgrade the property and will increase the city's tax base. This is uh, estimated to be a $1.2 million investment. The applicant believes that Popeyes will add another vibrant business and attractive building to this section of South Business Drive. A um, couple of staff comments. Uh, applicant will be demolishing the existing Ryder truck facilities located on the north side of the property to construct the new drive through restaurant. Access to the site is proposed to come from the existing South Business Drive uh, drive driveway, and we'll also have a shared access agreement with the new lot to the south. Uh, applicant does show a little bit of uh, uh, a conceptual signage that's likely to go on the building. Um, no formal sign permit application has been submitted, but uh, that will be forthcoming and will probably be uh, similar to what you're seeing on the building right now. 
Uh, staff just had a question in terms of the plan commission may want to talk to the applicant in terms of the love that chicken tagline just to understand um, uh, that that signage on the south side of the building presently the property is one parcel and the applicant will be required to create the parcels as proposed and they show that they own the new lot prior to receiving a building permit if there would be any changes to the uh, parcel sizes or site plan they would have to come back to the plan commission for review um, it appears that there are some contaminated soils on the east end of the property that are intended to remain covered and capped with concrete and maybe the applicant could maybe address a little bit what the uh, uh, what will take place on that east end of the property in the time frame maybe for those contaminants to be mitigated um, there's a six foot chain link fence on the north side of the property running from east to west and I'm not sure if this is on Popeye's parcel or the parcel to the north. Um, and if it's on property, uh, Popeye's is the fence to be removed. Just a little bit of uh, cleanup of the property in and of itself. There's some miscellaneous pallets along the east property line that'll be cleaned up as part of this. Um, and what will be the status of the property to the south? Uh, will that remain hard surfaced with the old rider truck building or, or does the applicant have any information on that? Plan Commission may want to have the applicant, ex applicant explain a little bit about Popeye's menu, how did Popeye select Sheboygan, and explanation of the drive through business compared to sit down. And uh, the proposed Popeye's restaurant is a nice redevelopment of this former uh, rider truck property and appears to be a nice fit with many of the commercial restaurants and retail service establishments along South Business Drive and creating that second parcel will also allow for free future commercial development in the future. The applicant is requ requesting two variances. One is to have a paving setback of zero feet, and that again is due to the fact that they're going to share access with that property to the south, and then requesting a variance from the locational landscaping requirements. So staff is recommending approval of the conditional use and exceptions with the conditions that you have before you. And I can answer any, any questions and the applicants on that line. Thank you for that report, Steve. Would the applicant from Smithco Eateries like to respond to the questions that Steve posed? Um, I guess maybe I, there was a lot of information, so I'm trying to navigate through it, you know, one by one. But um, as far as the lot, um, we we did work out an agreement to buy the entirety of the lot from Ryder. Uh, it was, you know, a little over three acres, which is substantially more than we would need to develop Popeyes. Um, and so I think the proposal was that we would utilize the northern portion of the, the property uh, to develop the, the Popeye's restaurant, which would leave us significant amount of property to a south parcel that would host a similar structured uh, business, whether it be another restaurant or, or something in that, that scope. Um, so we would intend to sell off that portion to another developer or possibly develop it for someone else if they chose to. Um, uh, as far as the you question about the contaminated soils, uh, because of that, we, we didn't want to get too deep off into the process of having to dig out a bunch of ground. So our, our plan was to leave it capped and, and un, un, uh, undisturbed. Um, we don't have any uh, tentative plans to develop that back portion of the lot as it stands right now. Um, I'm sure that if we, we decided to try to do something with it in the future, we would revisit the city to see uh, what we would need to do about that. But we it, the, the depth of the lot was more than what we would need to host a, an adequate parking. Um, so we had no intention of disturbing it at this time. Um, I wrote down, I guess, about the fence across the north. Uh, we have no record of it, so it's not anything that we would want to keep um, unless the city wanted it there. Um, so we would likely remove it if, if it was on our property, if it's on the, the northern property, I, we have no control of that, I guess. Um, status of the south lot, there is no uh, predetermined status of the south lot. We would hope to, like I said, sell it off to another developer in the future. We'll and cover some Steve. of the other questions. I think that's most of them. You asked about uh, why Sheboygan, I believe. I can touch on that. Um, Smitko Eateries uh, signed a development agreement with uh, Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen to develop uh, 15 restaurants in the corridor of Wisconsin that stretches from the uh, Lake Michigan coastline all the way across to 
uh, the Wisconsin, uh, the, the Minnesota border where you have all clear lacrosse. Uh, we started with our development efforts in um, the Green Bay Appleton area. We have a restaurant in Fond du Lac as well as Manitowoc uh, as well. So Sheboygan is a natural fit for that market. Um, you know, the population densities are, are strong enough to support a, a restaurant. Um, the community strong enough to support. I feel like there's enough demand in the market for it. Um, so we we were very interested in go, coming into Sheboygan. Uh, it was just a matter of finding the right piece of property that made sense. And so we feel like we found that in this this location. Um, but we we do have plans to develop uh, a total of 15 restaurants across that entire section of uh, Wisconsin. Thank you for responding to all those questions, uh, Marilyn Montemayor. Uh, thank you. Oh, Mr. Rodriguez, my daughter-in-law called me early this morning. To She read in the newspaper, Popeye is coming. And she was so excited because she and our grandson drive to Manitowoc to eat Popeye. And you say yes. you're going across Wisconsin. You're going to Eau Claire also? That is wonderful. Eau Claire will love to have Popeye's. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. We uh, we definitely plan to be in Eau Claire and the Cross, as well as probably Wausau, Stevens Point, some places along the way. But uh, the the Fox River Valley area was really our, our priority to start with, just because of the uh, just the opportunities that were kind of there to kind of build a good market from there and spread out from from that point. So I'd like to mo make a motion to approve, subject to staff recommendations. A second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Uh, yes, Mark, uh, just have a question. Uh, do you know the nature of the contamination on the property? Were th are there gas tanks in there? There, there were some underground tanks um, that Ryder had uh, prior. Um, I, I do know that we did get a letter from DNR that basically uh, was no further action required. But of course, if the area were to be disturbed, there would be the potential of contamination to be uh, reconciled. So. Um, uh, no, I think the extent of it was some underground tanks, whether it be fuel tanks or something, I'm not really positive. Um, you know, Excel may have some additional information on that. Um, but I know that where the where the DNR designated the area that was of concern was kind of in a, in a location that wasn't necessarily inflicting on where we would need to develop the restaurant. So um, to, to avoid the risk of getting in you know, too deep. Uh, we just decided the best course of action initially was to avoid the area altogether. Sounds good, thank you. Uh, Alder Person Barnes. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, sir, I was wondering if the uh, love that chicken that you have on the uh, side of the building, is that a registered trademark or a logo? It, That's my, my first, a, yeah, pardon sorry, me? Right. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yes, it is a registered trademark for Popeyes. Thank you. And then uh, what is the uh, seating capacity inside going to be at this location? Uh, dining room capacity is 42 seats, I believe, with a maximum occupancy is somewhere in like the 56-ish range. I'm not exactly positive. But uh, actual dining seats is about 42. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. All those, no. oh, we have to call the roll. Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alderperson Bourne? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemayor? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Congratulations and welcome to Sheboygan. Thank you, guys. Item uh, 3.3 is an application and conditional use with exceptions by Maretta Moreno to operate a daycare facility located at 1720 North A Street. Steve. Thanks, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Maretta Moreno is here, as well as her architect, Luis Barbosa. And then we do have um, a couple neighbors here, uh, Keith and Dixie Hummage. Um, and they live in the residence directly to the north of uh, the pro uh, project tonight. Um, Marita Moreno is proposing to operate a new daycare facility at 1720 North A Street. Um, this was uh, recently purchased in January of 2021. The existing building is divided into two parcels. The building is attached with a zero lot line 
and the north half of the building is identified as 1720 North A Street, which is the one we're taking a look at today for the daycare. The north half of the property is vacant and was previously occupied by the Wisconsin Spine Center on the upper level and the Midwest Home Care on the lower level. The south half of the property is presently occupied by Samaritan's Hands, a faith-based drug and alcohol outpatient clinic. The proposed project calls for the occupancy of the north half of the building to operate a children's daycare on both levels. The proposed children's daycare in this building will operate from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. The site was selected because the building is in good condition and has plenty of off-street parking, plenty of uh, space for outdoor children's play area. Uh, the daycare center will have approximately seven child care assistants and the owner. Three classrooms will be on the lower level and four classrooms will be on the upper level. The indoor activities will concentrate on the care of the children entrusted to the daycare with emphasis on bilingual language, cultural, social, emotional, and cognitive areas. There is adequate space for an outdoor playground area adjacent to the rear of the building and the outdoor activities will concentrate uh, on motor skills of the arms, legs, hands, and basic mental cognition, such as sensation, attention, perception, and reasoning. Um, the applicant indicates uh, the following with regards to some site improvements to take place on the site. A new handicap uh, accessible ramp will provide access to the first floor level. A new dumpster enclosure will be included. A new six-foot wood fence will be installed on the north and south sides of the property to provide privacy to the adjacent neighbors and safety for the daycare center. A new six-foot chain link fence with safety bollards will be installed in the outdoor children's play area. The existing parking lot in the back of the building provides 18 parking spaces and the property has an existing driveway to enter and exit the parking lot without infringing on the property rights of the privacy of the adjacent um, properties. 1720 North A Street had previously been used as a healthcare and the applicant is now converting this space into daycare facilities so they'll be required to meet the building codes and the state of requirements to operate that daycare. The applicant understands uh, that the adjoining building to the south is presently occupied by Samaritan's Hands <coughs> and uh, the faith-based and drug and alcohol outpatient clinic. Uh, Apkin is proposing to fence the south property line which is presently open and permits cross access and parking to each of the buildings. Um, once the fence would be installed, access and parking between the neighboring properties would no longer be possible. So it's up to the applicant to verify that there's no access or parking agreements between that before installing that fence. Um, a six foot high chain link fence with privacy slats around the perimeter of the new outdoor playground located between the west end of the building and the parking lot and the applicant does show four foot tall bollards and five, at five feet on center to protect the playground from the vehicles. The applicant is proposing a six foot high solid fence around the perimeter of the north and southwest property lines. Um, appears that much of the common line between 1728 uh, North A Street and the neighboring residence at 1726 North Street A Street is paved surface and that's uh, the Hummich's home and uh, we probably have some comments from them with regards to some current concerns about fencing in that area. Um, in addition, the driveway of the residence at 1726 is right on that property line. So before installing a fence, if one is to be installed, we want to make sure it's on the property and we want to make sure that it is not blocking uh, any type of vision for the Hummage property as they pull in and out of their driveway. So we'll probably have a little discussion on that. Uh, again, applicants proposing a new handicap ramp and they are requesting um, an exception to maintain the existing zero foot paving setback to the north and south property lines. And staff was recommending approval of the conditional use uh, subject to the conditions you have before you. The applicants are here and I can answer any questions as well. Steve, thank you for that report. Would the applicant like to make any comments? The only comment that I wanted to make is uh, make them aware that we understand the concern of the neighbor regarding the fence. They have indicated that the fence provides uh, limitations for the maneuvering. Our intention was to provide the, the fence basically to protect their privacy, but if it's infringing into the use of the driveway, we have no problem removing 
the portion of the fence to accommodate their needs. Could I ask a question real quick? Would would the Hummuches have any problems if they wanted to fence it, if they started, you know, say for example, at the end of the garage or something to that effect? If they went from the front of the garage and back, it would be fine. So if that might be something that, that if that you wish work, to do yes. something like that, you they, could certainly consider that. Of course, of course, yes. Go ahead, Luis, if there's anything you'd like to add with regards to just the use and, and why she chose here and, and what needs she's trying to meet in terms of the daycare. Um, she presently has a daycare in Milwaukee and she wants to relocate to Sheboygan for the civility, the security, the safety, and also to provide services to the underdeserved Hispanic growing population. And she's bringing a special services, not just the care of the babies, but bilingual, bicultural educational services for the Hispanic community and anybody else that would like to participate. Okay, well, thank you for those comments. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions? Mayor. How Mayor, much is, would Mayor, you like to make any yeah. statement? Please step to the podium then. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Keith Homage. I live Keith, in Keith, could you pull the mic, down, the mic a down? Thank you. My name is Keith Homage. I live at 1726 North 8th. The property is just north of the property you want to change. We have the shared driveway, which we have discussed now, for the fence. Uh, I have taken care of that driveway for three years for snow. I've cut the grass on that property for three years free of charge, because the owner that owned it would never pay me. <laughs> uh, I got this notice on Saturday. I have very little knowledge of what was going on until what I'm hearing now. What I learned was from Samaritan hands, and that was just kind of piecemeal. Here are a few of my concerns, okay? We talked about the hours of operation. How many children are they talking about? That hasn't been addressed. Uh, the location of the playground, it's gonna be noisy. That's where I'm wondering about. Okay, now they address that they're gonna have their staff. That's kind of one of my questions. Okay, I've been in that house for 70 years. I grew up in that house. So I know that neighborhood. It's been a quiet neighborhood for 70 years. Now it's gonna get noisy. I'm wondering what it's gonna to do to my property for resale value. Because you're gonna find a lot of people that ain't gonna to wanna to live there. So I'm just wondering about that. Okay, uh, I understand where they wanna put the playground. Because of the noise and that, I actually thought it'd be a better place in the back. They got because that playground's only 42 feet from our back door and our windows in the kitchen and in the dining room. So we will never be able to have them open in the summer months. There's 30 feet of grass back there and the blacktop asphalt is adjacent to that. A bigger concern that I believe the panel should be worrying about is the building itself. Wisconsin spine moved out of there because of roof leaks mold and mildew in the walls and ceilings. This is probably due to the, flat, the fact that the roof was done by fly-by-nighters that came in, which we had to have the police remove from our backyard. They were camping out back there and using our backyard as a latrine and a toilet. I called Jack about it. The company that had going up there, they weren't even licensed, bonded, or insured. He pulled them off from down there. They did not speak English. But they were already had half of the roof done. Now they went over the top of two other layers right over the gravel, didn't tear anything off. They put new beaver board down, rubber roofing, and I do know what I'm talking about because I worked for Butson Construction and I did rubber roofing. That roof is a sponge. 
If you walk on it, it's like walking on a, a waterbed. That is one of the reasons why Tim left there because his patients from the mold and the mildew were getting sick and they were complaining. And that's still there. I mean, that's when Tim had to cover up his equipment all the time. The basement leaks, it's got standing water along with mold, and I have seen that myself. The overhangs are so full that the water actually runs out of the outside lights, out of the fixtures. There is no water that I see coming out of the downspouts, so I don't even know where the water goes. There's uh, moss growing out of the overhangs <clears throat> on the fascia. I think before they even, even consider about putting any children inside there, this has all got to be corrected. I don't know what, how, you, how the city could allow to have the mold and the mildew put children in there. I, I consider it a, it's a health and a safety factor. Also, I don't know if they're aware that Samaritan Hand also has pedophiles over there. Now, how is that going to affect their business? That's their livelihood. They have drug drug people coming there. Mayor. People coming out of jail. Okay. How is that going to affect their business also? That's about all I can say. Thank you for those comments, Steve. Um, I think the one best thing that you just summed up is that there are a lot of issues there and that you have someone who's interested in investing in the property who's got an architect who's gonna have to work with the city in terms of the building plans and everything necessary to get in there. So I think one of the things right off the bat, you speak of a number of concerns about how it's been handled and the, the structure itself. You finally have someone there who's willing to invest and do what's necessary to improve the property, thereby making your property values probably better than what it has been previously. Um, with regards to the uh, fencing, they've indicated they want to work with you in terms of allowing the driveway so you can see there's some relationship building that could be done um, to work together. Um, they're investing in this property. They wanna be there just like you guys. I'm sure they don't want to have any issues they're cleaning the property, so I would just suggest that you continue to work with one another and that Luis, as architect, will take a look at these things because <laughs> without getting these things taken care of, you can't get an occupancy permit. So, so with regards to the, the playground, I guess I would let the Morenos speak to that. They indicate their hours are 6 to 6 p.m. to 6, uh, or 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., but I can't imagine they want to put the playground in the back with the winter and having kids, you know, I, I would imagine they want to have it as close as possible. So I don't, I, that part I can't give you a great answer on. But as far as everything else, I think they've come in, they've tried to work with the city in terms of uh, uh, getting the building together so that it is improved and that it is better in the neighborhood than what you have right now. Um, and I'd like to speak also. If you'd, you'd like come to. to yep. Um, my name is Dixie Hummage. I live with my husband, Keith, on the property 1726 North 8th. Um, what I wanted to find out is if this place next door with the Samaritan hands have sexual predators and drug you know, addicts, uh, we have found needles in the parking lot and everything else that you can imagine. Is there not a law that you have to be so many par feet apart for having children in that environment? I think you have to have like so many feet that they cannot be around pedophiles. So I don't think that's a really good thing for children to be I think, over there. I, I think that it's if they're staying overnight, I don't know if, if there's any input from the chief that he could help out, but I believe that that's for a transition, actual staying overnight, and there's no one staying overnight at the Samaritan's hands. All right, I just want to- Chief, wanted, could uh, you respond to that question? Sure, there, there isn't. The ordinance deals with, with residences where people live. Nobody lives at the clinic. It's a clinic. There's offices there that um, intake and things like that are done. And then there's one-on-one -on -one treatment, um, group treatment, and meetings that are held there. Um, 
I personally am not aware of any sex offenders that currently receive services there. Occasionally, somebody who is a sex offender and is in recovery may be receiving services there, and that would all be um, coordinated either through their probation or parole officer or, or the state, if the state still has jurisdiction over them. And so that would all be worked out and approved if they're gonna be going there um, to get services. Um, and so I would stress very much so that Samaritan's Hand is a great asset to our community and the people that are there are people in recovery and it really increases the safety of our community, not makes it more dangerous. Then why do we buy needles in the parking lot? I mean, what's that say? I found them myself already. A couple of people have found them. The neighbors on the other side have found them. And they picked them up and threw them in the dumpster. So I don't think that's safe. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Marilyn Montemayor, did you have your light on? I, I did, but could I speak after Jim Bourne speaks? Okay, Jim. Uh, I have a question for the architect, please. Sir, do you know if there was a pre-inspection pre of the building by your clients before the building was purchased? They're aware that the building has several deficiencies. They understand that the roof needs attention. They understand there was some partial water penetration. At the present time, there's no smells of water penetration. And what they about know that the building needs attention. What about they, mold? Huh? What about the mold? I'm no expert in mold, but I did not see any mold there, no. If that, if that is the issue, uh, it, will city staff see that that's re remediated? Re I'm trying to say the word. Remediated. Uh, remediated? Right. Remediated. As part, we, of the, uh, as part of the occupancy. We're not, we're not mold experts either, but I would believe that this is gonna need some state licensing for daycare, so the state is gonna have to sign off on that before the city would even sign off. Now is the, is this is the initial step that we're taking. We're here in front of the board to verify if we are gonna be allowed to have the special use. The understanding is that after we go through that step, then we will explore the options with the building inspection department to obtain the necessary permits, inspections and occupancy and approval by the state. But we need to go through the step before we continue investing in money. Uh, question, I guess this might be for staff uh, uh, or, <clears throat> well, for staff. The other half of the building that's occupied, do they have the same roof issues and leak issues and mold issues as, as this half of the building? And if, if that's true, is that gonna affect, uh, affect their use? I'm, I'm not aware of that at this moment in time. Usually if there is something up, uh, so we would have some type of contact or hear from someone that there may be some issues. We haven't heard that at this point in time. I can't sit here and say I know 100%, but we certainly have not heard that to be the case. Well, I would think that, you know, I would think if there's gonna be children in that building and there's any possibility of transfer of that mold and, and that type of thing, over to this facility, that definitely should be checked out before they get an occupancy permit for their for their staff safety and the kids and the kids' uh, safety. Sure. Thank you, uh, Marilyn. Uh, thank you. I think the daycare center would be a great addition to the city of Sheboygan, and I love the location and I love the idea that you're going to do it multicultural. That's important. I'd like to make a move a motion to approve, subject to staff recommendations. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Any seconding? I got some questions. I got a question, Mayor. Would you like to second? Then we'll have discussion. Yeah, I'll second. Thank you very much. <laughs> now you can have the floor. Okay. I just want to touch touch on this fence a little bit. I know you talked about privacy. Are you sure you want that fence pushed back to the edge of your garage? Because we we want we want to make that as part of the motion, or do you want to extend it all the way? Okay. You're sure. Okay. Okay, from the front of your garage all the way to the west. Okay, I know you picked up. I know you had some concerns with, with uh, safety or quietness and all that. But okay, I just want to make sure that you haven't changed your mind. Okay. Actually, could I ask one more question on that? Go ahead, Steve. Do, uh, do you know if Mr. Hummich, if your garage is pretty close to the property line, and if the fence got put up, would that impact anything in terms of <laughs> maintenance? <laughs> Okay, so there would be room to maintain it if they put the fence adjacent to it. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. So, sounds good. I just didn't want to make sure if it was a foot on there and they put the fence in now. Okay. Thank okay. You. Any other discussion, Dave? Yeah, I'm just curious uh, in regards to uh, the noise issue uh, you, that you raised. Uh, do you know about what percentage of the time that you'd have the kids outside? Obviously, it's weather related, but uh, what percentage of the day would you actually be using the uh, playground? The available playground allows for the use of one third of the children. And not, not, so not all of them are there at the same time. They come out <clears throat> for an hour or 35 minutes. And the ages are the infants up to five years old and then maybe 12 years old. But in regards to the noise, you have children, you know, and the playground is small enough, it's right in the back of the building, and the distance is probably 40, 50 feet from the, from the property. Okay, thank you. Alder Person Barn. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna vote to approve this because I do think it's a very good concept for the, for the neighborhood and, and there is a big need for daycare. However, I am, I am gonna support it with the uh, caveat that I hope that uh, all of my concerns as far as the mold and that type of thing, both in the, uh, uh, existing, the existing tenant and how that will reflect on, 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 on the daycare center, that that's taken care of before any occupancy permits are issued. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any last discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Mayor Vanderstein. Aye. Older person born. Aye. Brian Sasma. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemayor. Aye. Dave Hoffman. Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Good luck with your project. I hope we can make all the changes and it's comfortable for everyone. Thank you. The next item is item 3.4, which is an application for conditional use with exceptions by Tim Fettig to operate a Verlo mattress store from the multi-tenant uh, facility located at 4315 South Taylor Drive. Steve. All right, thanks, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Fettig's here, and he has operated Verlo mattress factory stores of Greater Sheboygan for 23 years, opening in 1999, or 1998, starting at Taylor Heights, and then moving to their current location on South Business Drive in November of 2001. Uh, Verlo is proposing to operate from the 5,000 square tenant space for unloading of raw materials, warehousing, manufacturing, assembly of products for delivery to customers, retail sales, and wholesale sales. At the, and this is located at the south end of the building previously used by Diamond Vogel Paint. Um, Verlo manufactures and assembles the products that they sell on a daily basis. Um, they're proposing uh, is proposing a store where the mattresses are produced in the showroom space. Verlo will combine, combine manufacturing and assembly of mattress with the showroom space, helping customers understand Verlo is factory direct. Verlo will receive raw materials, sort materials, move materials on carts to production tables located in the showroom area, and the completed mattresses will be moved to the warehouse for delivery to the customers. Verlo selected the site because it's ideally positioned to offer both manufacturing and sales in a showroom space. Uh, Verlo will receive the raw materials and mattresses will be assembled and manufactured for delivery to customers. Show will, showroom will combine manufacturing and retail space. The wide open design of the space is perfect for a layout of a combined assembly and retail uh, showroom and the availability of a loading dock and drive-in access for unloading raw materials and loading finished goods for delivery to the customer. <clears throat> Mr. Fedig said he's tired of carrying product into his place and appreciates the fact of a loading dock. Um, there would be four employees and uh, uh, at, at this site, the applicant has provided some conceptual drawings on signage, but no formal signage has been presented, so we'll work together on that. And they've uh, provided some conceptual drawings as to how the exterior could be renovated and we'll continue working with the applicant on that. There are a couple of conditions. One of the interesting aspects of this was 
when you think of Verlo mattress, and Mr. Fedig, you can probably help explain this a little better than I, is that you think of the retail store on South Business Drive and going in the industrial park, how exactly does this work? Um, there is a section in the ordinance that does allow for an accessory uh, portion of retail sales, and the applicant is requesting a variance to have a little bit more, um, usually it's 25% of that space, and uh, uh, and approximately 35% of this is dedicated to warehouse and approximately 65% is combined showroom and production assembly. So when I was initially speaking with Mr. Fedig, I, I didn't know how we were gonna meet that, but I think um, maybe he could explain to everyone that how the showroom is used and how the assembly takes place and how um, I believe now he is meeting the requirements and staff will be recommending approval. But I think Mr. Fedig, maybe you could explain to the commission a little bit in terms of that process and what you did for me to better understand it. Perfect, thank you, Steve. Um, first of all, thanks for even hearing, hearing me out on this. We're asking things that are a little bit outside of the norm. Um, Verlo has been around for a long time and um, we're a franchisee. My wife and I own the store in Manitowoc where we have a, a factory and a showroom together um, in the same space. Uh, it's, uh, and in Sheboygan, we've always wished we could build or assemble mattresses here locally. And we just have never had uh, the ability to do that. Well, with uh, changes in technology and some kind of new focus of our franchisor, they really want to bring the production right into uh, the consumer space because uh, consumers aren't used to the fact that we literally build them. I mean, we do the assemblies ourselves. And one of the cool parts of this concept is uh, customers will be able to see mattresses in different stages of uh, production right on in the showroom itself. There'll be, you know, most of production will happen early in the day, then we'll have sales kind of midday and deliveries, and then uh, the store will close at six o'clock, and you know, it's closed in the evenings. Um, but it's, it's really kind of a unique, it's different, it doesn't really fit anywhere. Like, if we're in a commercial space where we are now, we can't, we can't manufacture there. And in the manufacturing place, we can't really sell there, so we're, we're this space was just kind of very unique in the fact that there are other sales happening, uh, maybe not of mattresses, but of other things, HVAC, um, pump parts, there's different retail sales happening there. And we just thought that would be a great combination of, of where we're actually building it, people can see it and experience their product being assembled and manufactured and then delivering it right from here in Sheboygan. It just, uh, um, and actually, interestingly enough, um, we can we do comfort adjustments. I don't know if you're all familiar, but we, because we build them, you can sleep on the mattress, and if it ends up being too firm or too soft, we can actually bring your mattress right back to the factory, and in some instances, do a comfort adjustment right in your home. But right now, we still have to use some machinery to do that. So right, we've been having to haul all the mattresses back up to Manitowoc and then back down here to Sheboygan. This gives us the ability to be able to do some of that right here. So it, it just saves mileage on the truck and, and really kind of uniquely gives us the ability to have customers come right to the showroom and we can make the comfort adjustment where they try the bed with what we're adding or taking away right there in the showroom. So it's it's pretty unique um, way to do it. Okay, thank you for those comments. Are there any other questions, Jim? Uh, Mayor, thank you, Mayor. I would make a motion to approve subject to staff conditions. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, that motion's on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Marilyn? Thank you, which has nothing to do with your business whatsoever at all. But your name, Mr. Fedick, which I haven't heard in many years. 60 years ago, when I lived in New York City and worked in New York City, I dated a Mr. Fetting. <laughs> if it was my dad, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just, uh, <laughs> uh, we are all related. I just don't know where that is. Uh, it is interesting. That's very interesting. Well, with that, I'll ask for a vote on the motion. That's good. Please call the roll. Yes. Mayor Vanderstein? Aye. Alderperson Bourne? Aye. Ryan Sasno? Aye. Sherry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Congratulations and good Thank luck you. with your, your endeavor here.
Thank you guys so very much. Yep, it's awesome. appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Okay, we're looking at uh, April 13th for our next meeting. And then, uh, Jerry, do you have a motion for us? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job.